Hi everyone, welcome to STM PCB Academy. My name is Aviral. Today I am going to talk about what is reflection in a transmission line and how voltage level fluctuates when there is impedance discontinuity. Then I will talk about some intentional and unintentional causes of reflections in a design along with couple of simulations in Security Aurora 17.4 and Topology Explorer. So let's get started. We will start with very first question, what is reflection in a transmission line? So reflection is distortion on signal line due to impedance discontinuity and it may look like ringing but it is completely different from that. We'll understand that throughout the video. Now due to reflections SI problem, voltage can go low or high at any instances and cause false triggering. Now let's talk about what I mean by impedance discontinuity. So impedance discontinuity means the change in instantaneous impedance signal sees down the line. Now it can be intentional or unintentional. For example, added corner on the transmission line, added vias, branches or stubs, connectors or packages etc. As you can see on the diagram. Now let's try to understand reflection in terms of magnitude of signal sent and reflected. So till now we got the idea of reflection and as a signal propagate down the transmission line, it sees instantaneous impedance. And if instantaneous impedance is uniform, that means impedance 1 equal to impedance 2 equal to impedance 3, then we call it characteristic impedance. But if instantaneous impedance ever change for whatever reasons, some of the signals will reflect back in opposite direction and some part of the signal will continue but with different amplitude. So here all the instances where impedance change, we call them impedance discontinuity. In the next step, I am going to talk about how to estimate reflection voltage. So imagine on a PCB we have impedance discontinuity at one instant and their impedances are Z1 and Z2. Now we are sending a signal on this transmission line of voltage V incident but due to impedance discontinuity, some signal voltage will reflect, we call it V reflected and sub signal will continue to transmit, we call it V transmitted. As you can see on your screen. So the relationship between the magnitude of incident and reflected signal will be V reflected divided by V incident is equal to Z2 minus Z1 upon Z2 plus Z1. We also represent it with rho and we call this ratio reflection coefficient. So from this equation, we got to know the amount of reflection is directly proportional to delta Z or change in impedance. Now let's see a quick example how to apply this equation to calculate V reflected and V transmitted. So as you can see in this example, Z1 is equal to 50 ohm, Z2 is equal to 75 ohm and V incident is 1 volt. Now we'll apply the formula V reflected divided by V incident, it will be 75 minus 50 divided by 75 plus 50 which will be 0.2. So if we'll multiply it by 100, we'll get reflection coefficient is 20%. That means the amount of reflected voltage is 20% of V incident which is 1 volt. And if we'll do that, we'll get 0.2 volt is V reflected. Similarly, V transmitted will be V incident minus V reflected. So it will be 0.8 volt. So this is how you can apply this equation to calculate reflection voltage. Now as we discussed reflection coefficient, similarly we have a term transmission coefficient which is T is equal to V transmitted divided by V incident is equal to 2 times Z2 upon Z1 plus Z2. Now how we got the equations of transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient? We have applied Ohm's law on these two equations. First one is I incident minus I reflected is equal to I transmitted. V incident minus V reflected is equal to V transmitted. And here we have to apply V is equal to I into Z for Z1 and Z2 and we'll get transmission coefficient and reflection coefficients equation from there. Now we can go ahead and see the simulation on Security Aurora 17.4. So in Security Aurora 17.4, I have simulated Statics 2 development board and this is the reflection post layout analysis. 
And here you can see in the simulation table, I have simulated for all the data buses, which has 64 bits. And from focus data, you can select for which parameter you wanted to see the results. So I have selected propagation delay here. And by double clicking over propagation delay, you can sort this table. So as you can see, parallel data bus 56 has maximum propagation delay. So what I've done, I've just selected that. So as you can see, this highlighted part of the track has maximum propagation delay and impedance discontinuity due to these change in impedances. Inside the simulation plot, you can see what you are sending from U7, which is our FPGA controller, and what you are receiving at XU2, which is a DIM module connector. So if you select this waveform, you can see this waveform has lot of false triggering. It is not even crossing VINH for few nanoseconds. So this is happening due to reflection or impedance discontinuity on the line. And similarly, you can check for parallel data 57, 58, 59, all this set of propagation delays, and it will highlight all the tracks which has impedance discontinuity. So you can go back to layout process and change all these layouts. So if you want me to create a separate video on how I have done that post layout reflection analysis step by step process, just let me know in the comment section. Now we are good to go for bounce diagram. So bounce diagram is representing the whole chain of reflection on a transmission line due to impedance discontinuities, even because of source resistors. So for predicting reflection on any transmission line, we need to know following parameters. First is time delay of transmission line or LEL. Second is impedance of each region of signal propagation. And third one is V incident. If we know these three parameters, we can easily predict reflection through bounce diagram. Now I'm just going to give you a quick demo of bounce diagram. So let's see that. So let's consider an example where source driving an open termination transmission line. And we have V source is equal to one volt. Source impedance is equal to 10 ohm, which will be impedance discontinuity for 50 ohm transmission line. And time delay is given one nanoseconds. So in case time delay is not given, you have to find out what is the length of the transmission line and you can calculate the time delay from that. So in the very first step, we are going to calculate V incident. So we have V source, which is connected to 10 ohm source resistance, and we have a 50 ohm transmission line. Now we have to find the voltage between 10 ohm and 15 ohm, and that will be V incident of 50 ohm transmission line. So we'll apply simple voltage divider. V incident is equal to Vs multiplied by 50 divided by 50 plus 10. And when you'll calculate it, you'll get 0.84 volt. Now we are good to go to create a bounce diagram. So in a bounce diagram, we'll have source 50 ohm transmission line and resistor. But remember that this source has 10 ohm source resistors. That means V incident is not one volt. It is 0.84 volt that we have calculated in step one. Now step two is what we'll receive at the receiver side. So incident voltage 0.84 volt will reflect back because it is a open termination at the receiver end. And when you will probe it, you'll find at the receiver side, we'll get 0.84 volt plus 0.84 volt, which will be 1.68 volt at the receiver side. So if we'll put that in a waveform, you'll get after two nanoseconds. So one nanoseconds, it will be zero because at that time signal will be traveling from transmitter to receiver. After one nanosecond, it will reach there and will get the voltage of 1.68 volt. Now let's talk about step three. So because of open termination at the receiver end, 0.84 volt will reflect. And now this will be the incident voltage. We'll apply the simple formula of V reflected upon V incident, so that will be reflection coefficient is equal to Z2 minus Z1 upon Z1 plus Z2. So 10 minus 50 divided by 10 plus 50 and we'll get minus 0.67 volt. So this will be reflection coefficient. And from that, we have to find out reflected voltage. 
So we'll get it by multiplying it by V incident, which will be 0.84 in this case. So we'll get V reflected is equal to minus 0.56 volt. Now this V reflected will be again reflected back to receiver side, where at the other end we have 1.68 volt. So again, it is an open termination register. When it will reach at the receiver side, we'll get 1.68 minus 0.56 minus 0.56 if we'll summarize it we'll get 1.68 minus 2 times 0.56 and we'll get 0.56 volt and if you we'll see that in the waveform for 1 nanosecond 1.68 volt will maintain because at the time signal will be traveling to the transmitter side all right and then it will reflect it back and this time will get 0.56 volt at the receiver when we'll measure it. So the receiver voltage will back to 0.56 volt. Now let's move to step five. So at step four, we have seen that minus 0.56 volt will incident and minus 0.56 volt will reflect from receiver end. All right. It will take one nanosecond further to reach at step five. So again, due to open termination, minus 0.56 volt will reflect and again we'll going to calculate reflection coefficient we'll use the same formula where we'll have v reflected upon v incident minus 10 minus 50 upon 10 plus 50 so it will be minus 0.67 now we have to multiply it with v incident to get the v reflected so v incident is minus 0.56 so we'll get v reflected 0.37 so now incident voltage for step six will be 0.37 and we have open termination at the other side. So it will multiply by two and add it to whatever the voltage there at step four. So it will be 0.56 plus two times 0.37, which will be 1.3 volt. So that means now the waveform voltage will go to 1.3 volt. So after n number of reflection, like we have discussed from point one to step five, our waveform will be stable at one volt because one volt was the exact incident voltage. All right. So I hope you got the idea of bounce diagram. Let me know in the comment section in case of any doubt. So at last I'm going to summarize this video with list of discontinuities that can cause reflection problem. And the first one will be end of transmission line should be terminated. So if you are not using proper termination, there will be reflection on the line and which will cause SI problems. Second is a package lead. Third one is an input capacitor pad. So if you are using any capacitors on the line, make sure their pad should be very small or you should use a small package of capacitor. Fourth is vias on the signal line. Fifth one is a connector, stub, branches and test pads can cause reflection issues. And last but not the least, cross over another transmission line. So that's it from reflection side. See you in the next video.